It's a TX Water Polo Pod special, this week featuring Lana Skinner, water polo parent extraordinaire. She helped make hospitality at Thunder Tournaments a topic of discussion throughout the state and even beyond. And her leadership with the club is prompted by parenting two boys who excelled at the club and continue to play at the collegiate level with Austin College. Joe had a chance to speak with her last week as we expand our coverage of the people who make water polo in Texas grow and excel. Now, Lana Skinner, here we go. Uh, today we are here with Lena Skinner. She is the parent extraordinaire and famous for doing all the hospitality for Thunder. She has two boys, uh, Brett and Kyle. Brett is currently up at Austin College. Kyle just graduated from Flower Mountain High School and is going to Austin College this upcoming fall. Lena, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Joe. So how is how are you and your family doing during the whole COVID-19? Oh, we're doing fine. I'm just glad I don't have to homeschool. The boys are on autopilot. They're done. Um, I was flying up until the end of March, staying home now for May and June. I'll go back to overseas travel in July. And by oh, yeah. That, I mean, that, yeah, was that, a, was, that a, was that a little strange still kind of working kind of on a plane in the middle of the pandemic? It was, I worked a whole lot in um, March and it, everything just started unraveling in March and the flights were canceling. People were starting to understand the significance of this event. I got stranded in Japan for a little while. They canceled our flight <laughs> going back home. So, but it all worked out in the end. It was fine. It, it, it worked out well. And I think it's going to come back very quickly. I do. All right. I hope. All right. Um, you're the first parent on our podcast. Are you excited about it? Oh, I am, and I'm actually a little nervous. I haven't been nervous in a very long time, Joe. Okay, you know, like so I, I have to give a shout out to Angela kind of, kind of Uno, who suggested that I bring you on. Um, so, so no, yeah, so no pressure. Um, do you want like do you want to say hi to, to kind of? Oh, I have to give a shout out to my Austin College parents. I am so looking forward to getting back and watching our boys play and watching the girls play too, because I know the Austin College girls missed out on their season, and we were really looking forward. All the boys' parents were going to come watch the girls play their first home game, and all my Thunder parents that we I haven't seen, and of course, you know, the Flower Mound High School team that wasn't able to finish their season, and the rest of the senior boys from the other schools, Denton, Flower Mound, um, we're just, we're really sad that they didn't get to finish their season, but it's all good. We're all, I think we're all looking forward to seeing each other back in the pool deck as soon as yeah. possible. So I want to make sure you're not holding back today. Okay. So, yeah. so don't hold back. We're okay. PG 13 rated. So, so just kind of remember that. All right. Um, so now did you follow the best of Texas? I did. At first I didn't understand what it was all about. But then um, I really understood, and then you gave, I listened to the podcast where you gave a lot of background information on some of the former teams, and I really started to understand. I didn't realize it had such a long history. Yeah. Yes, I was very impressed with that. Well, I thought is... I'd been around a long time, but I realized it had been around even longer than that. So we had a whole high school season planned about this is what we're going to do and this is how we're going to do it. So we had to come up with something to talk about in like in April and May here. So. Right. Because in the beginning, all the nominations and the kids were getting so excited about Texas water polo, about how to nominate their um, teammates and the coaches polls. The kids were getting really revved up about that on Texas water polo. We will continue it next spring. And then of course, you know, for fall of 2021 as well, but in the, but in the best of Texas, Flower Mount High School boys, which you had your boys on, yeah. how did that go? I mean, yeah, were the kids excited about that? And they won the first round game. Yes, they did. They started texting each other so that they could vote because they were starting <laughs> to understand the significance of it. I think I was the one that actually told Brett, but I know Kyle fi follows it on Twitter and follows everything. He gets notifications for all of that. I mean, he's a little intense about all those stats things. So he, <laughs> yeah. That's okay. That's okay. Well, I mean, they didn't make it past the second round, but that's okay. Um, I mean, I think the North Texas teams were well represented and such. But now just talking about the different kind of kind of North Texas teams, there is talk about getting back in the pool here soon. Just the mother of two boys. 
how do you feel about the return to the pool and, and the return to practice? Oh, I'm fine with that. Just dunk them in the water, douse them with a little chlorine. They'll be fine. Oh, I mean, come on. There are, yeah, but you don't have any concerns or whatever, so. No, I okay. don't. Not me personally. No, no, no. Yeah, I think, I think most parents kind of are aligned with you where they just want to get their kids out of the house, so. All right, I'm on Brett's computer, and of course, somebody is calling. I have no idea what to do. Make sure this works, okay. So now, how did your boys get started? Oh, the boys got started, most of the kids here in North Texas, they were all swimming. They were on summer swim team. They loved it. It was fun. They really didn't have an interest to go to year-round swimming, but they started to just not enjoy swimming. They didn't enjoy the practice. They enjoyed the competition, but they did not enjoy practicing at all, especially Kyle. So they just were, their interest was tapering off and I wanted to keep them in the pool. I wanted to keep them active. One of their swim instructors mentioned that they had a good natural egg beater kick and said that, suggested you should try, you should introduce them in a water polo. I don't even know if I even heard of water polo at that point. But, you know, he said you should introduce them to it. They have a natural affinity for it. A good, a good egg beater. I don't even know what an egg beater kick was. So I just started asking around and I heard that you had a practice at that old Louisville Nanatorium. Yep. Yep. Your name came up from one of the swim moms over at Flower Mound High School because Flower Mound High School had a water polo team at that time. And I took both boys and just showed up. And that was, <laughs> that was very interesting. You kind of looked them over and Brett was very interested. And I remember you looked over, we debate about this all the time, but you looked over at Kyle and you said, he's kind of little. And so I didn't put Kyle on the team that year. I just put Brett, but unbeknownst to everyone, Kyle was actually a better swimmer at that time than Brett was. And All right, so now here, I'm going to interject here. I do disagree oh, with you on that because Brett was what? So Brett was 12 years old. I only remember you and Brett coming on the pool deck, and there was no Kyle that first time. And you did not want to bring Kyle out that first summer, which was fine. I understand because you said that he was too little. And so we are going to agree to disagree on that. We're going to debate about that because <laughs> you just did that little once over because I didn't want to be the pushy parent. You know, not then, you know, I was still, you know, on my first date manners, like okay, <laughs> I am going to just be the polite parent and go with it. And that whole entire season, Kyle sat in the stands, just completely envious and even took him to NJOs that year. Brett did and Kyle was still sitting in the stands and that kid was ready to jump in the water at any point in time. Yeah. Well, see, my whole thing is I would never tell a kid, a parent that they can't, that they're too little to play. That's why I know that I never said that. High school practice. That's okay. And That's that okay. Was, though, those kids were big. This was back in the day where we were taking anybody and everybody as long as they could swim at 25. So yeah, they could swim, yeah. So, but, but it was I, but, fun. In the very get go, I do remember that. Um, I think you started coming out in the middle of June, and then I said, "Oh, by the way, we have this tournament at the end of the summer in California. Do you want to go?" And you're like, "Yeah." I'm like, what? After after one practice, you want to go? Awesome. So because I go, "I am the best going. salesman ever." So yeah. <laughs> they were already going out. To, we were already going to California for the TAF um, national championships, and they were right in the same area. Mm -hmm. And the water polo was right after the swim. And my flight benefits do come in handy, you know, to be able to travel at the last minute and make switches. So it actually was a win-win. I was like, oh, sure. I have to throw in here. I have every single one of your emails still. The initial <laughs> email. The you have a big old file folder right there. Yes. I have <laughs> double and a half. I might have to get a USB just to store your emails. But I never did clean out that file. And I did, I went back and I was like, wow, I started receiving emails from him in May of 2011. Yeah. That's just unreal. That's a, almost a 10 year email relationship. <laughs> it's going to be a longer relationship too. But now I do remember Kyle's first practice though. 
because after we came back from JOs, I think we started having like some younger kid practices up in Flower Mound and you brought him out for his first practice. And I will never forget this because I tell people this story all the time and um, where he's out on the pool deck and you start putting on a latex cap on him. You, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, and you start putting on a latex cap on him. And I'm like, Lena, what are you doing? And, uh, and then I, and then, and then your response was simply, I don't want him to miss up his pretty hair. And I'm like, all right, so let's make sure, let's think about this for a second. All right. Nobody in water polo boys wears a latex cap. And then you're like, why not? And I'm like, because the other boys are going to make fun of him. So you don't want him to start off on, on the wrong foot. And then you, and then you took it off and you just gave me that look of, fine. <laughs> I never, no, <laughs> mess up his pretty hair. But there you go. <laughs> I know he was excited and, and they have both loved water polo from that first introduction. There was no going back. None whatsoever. They've loved it every second since. So like um, any good uh, fun stories from your boys playing that kind of stick out a little bit? They really remember and they, they re when they reminisce now, they love all those younger games. They love, they love tags. They loved playing when we would go play in the UT swim pool, the swim um, center. They loved playing with each other. They loved playing against each other. It was really, um, it was really fun to watch them do both. Kyle really loved playing goalie that one year for the girls team in eighth grade tags. He had a lot of fun. Because I think playing. he was a little bit younger, right? He was a little bit yeah, younger than the other one. Younger, ones. yeah. He was younger. I think he was in seventh, sixth or seventh grade, but he yeah. played for the girls team. I don't know what happened or how that transpired, but because it really wasn't his team and there was no pressure and he was goalie, he had a lot of fun with that. He really did. I think they really enjoyed in their younger years playing with the girls. I thought that was a great aspect of the sport. Sure. to see boys and girls playing together competitively, yeah. you know, it, it just was a great introduction to athletics for them, that boys and girls, I mean, because Kyle, Kyle and Sophia, they, they could fight each other in the pool. That was really fun to watch when they were younger. They enjoyed I think they all fought each other. I was actually, I always liked watching Brett and Kyle because Kyle was always go hard against Brett and Brett would just have, cause Brett's kind of like a cool customer a little bit. And he just is, he's a smooth left-handed player and he just kind of like is swatting away his little brother, like, like, yeah, like, kind of like the annoying gnat and stuff like this and with a big eye roll and a sigh. So, and he takes after his mother that way. So there you oh, go. You're funny. Oh, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, Kyle gets all his athleticism from his mother just in case. Okay. Anybody okay. 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 <laughs> Okay. Now, I mean, like, it was, it, it was always nice for them to go out to JOs and play and stuff like that. Um, and I don't think you ever missed a trip. I think no. you went to most of the trips, right? This would have been the 10th one this year. Really? And Kyle, yes. And Kyle played in the one year they played, the boys played in two because it was 10 and under. So they played 12 and under boys. And then we stayed the extra week because Kyle played 10 and under also. So they still have all their little bag tags from all their JOs. And once the Thunder started making our t-shirts, we definitely were the cool t-shirt team and the yeah. cool gear team. We looked really good out there once we started making our own t-shirts and had our cool Thunder gear. We and everybody was wearing the same color t-shirt yeah. each, yeah, each day. That was a great, great plan. Yeah, yes. we really enjoyed that. We looked good and people asked about us. And I remember how many people were shocked to find out that um, we traveled from Texas by airplane. They were, Did you flew? You flew here just just for children's sports? And I remember one parent kind of sarcastically interjecting, "Of course, they're from Texas. That's what they do in Texas. They travel for their kids' sports." Okay, that's that's kind of harsh in a kind of a way, a little bit. It was. It wasn't mean, but I, it, it made me realize that's what a lot of Texas parents really do do. We do invest a lot of time and money into sports because mm -hmm. we just enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah I mean, plus, 
Plus you're in Texas. So kind of, kind of traveling to the East coast or West coast, isn't like a five hour trip or something like that. It's only like a two and a half hour here or two hour there. So. Right. And it can be very economical too, because we are in Dallas, Fort Worth. So it's, it, you know, and things are not as expensive as on the East Coast and the West Coast. So, so what was your favorite trip that we went on? Like JOs or going to Annapolis or going to different stuff? Oh, loved the Annapolis trips. Loved it. I would say the boys' favorite trip was that first year in Northern California that Stanford hosted. Okay. Because they loved being on that Stanford campus. And I loved going to JOs. So the kids could see different colleges and different, just, it, just exposure, just exposure to the sport, just exposure to the facilities. Um, they both loved, it was a great opportunity for both of them to go to holiday camp, you know, and go swim in the Olympic pool, the Olympic training center in Colorado Springs. That was, that was a huge opportunity for them. And they still remember that. They still have their little IDs because they thought it was magical that their IDs opened the sliding glass doors. Oh, I mean, I think that camp's great for, so for, for all the people that are listening, I went to that camp as a kid. I went to that camp as a student coach. I, I went to camp as a staff coach. I, I went to camp as a, as a, as the camp director. It is, uh, it is one of the best things that USA water polo kind of has done over a uh, year after year after year. So if you get your athlete an, an opportunity to go to those, it's great. And now they actually have separate ones for boys and girls. So it's, uh, so, so it's, there's even more kids that get to kind of uh, participate. So. Yes, they do remember Kyle actually was pulled out of the pool one time because his lips were so blue. Because it was turning blue in that pool. Yeah, he didn't have a whole lot of body fat back in the day, did he? He was a tiny little kid. So it was a very cold pool. So he does recall, you know, they pulled him out a few times because he was turning blue and there were some icicles forming on his eyelashes. But, you know, he survived. And they have good memories of that. And they have good, it was a great opportunity to get involved in Thunder at the time that we did. So I'm I mean, very appreciative of that. So, like, you got involved right whenever we were transitioning from Dallas Water Polo Club, where everybody played on one club in North Texas, to to a separate Thunder Water Polo Club, and there was a separate North Dallas, there was a separate Rockwell and such. And I think I asked you to be part of that first little group of parents that kind of led it and were on the board. Um, kind of tell me about that kind of a little bit from, you know, just, yeah, just me asking you and just kind of being part of that and kind of, and kind of seeing the whole, like the board grow, the team grow and such. It was a good opportunity from a parent side because you were actually running everything, all the emails, all the setup, all the takedown. And, you know, you were a little power, you know, a little territorial then back then, you know, we, you always had to have, you know, you're saying everything. We couldn't do anything. And you kind of gave the parents a little bit of room to make decisions, a little bit of room. I remember I begged you to even pick the hotels for NJOs. Because, you know, the parents, we were getting tired of paying $25 a day for parking and, you know, $10 for a cup of coffee in the hotel. So we had to, we had to get a little bit of input in what was going to happen. So you were really, of course, I mean, I slowly, I mean, the whole, like the whole, like the, like the whole purpose was to just kind of have its own separate kind of organization and then slowly get the parents on board. And then as I felt comfortable, and the other coaches kind of felt comfortable to start giving stuff away. But I have to truly admit, the best thing that I ever did, the best thing that I ever did uh -oh. was not doing hospitality anymore. <laughs> All right, I have to admit. So um, now you kind of took over hospitality. That was kind of like your kind of bread and butter thing kind of, kind of back in the day. And you kind of set the tone and – the bar for the hospitality to the point wherever I think everybody was coming to the different events. They're like, Oh my God, we have to do this now. And Hey, you know what? That was, it was much better than my uh, Domino's and Nutter Butters and Mountain Dew and Dr. Pepper. You definitely set the bar and everybody that, that, yeah, that can, that, yeah, that has come to a Thunder event since then, they've loved it. And it just brought everybody up throughout the state. Your hospitality. So congrats. Yeah, that's very nice of you to say, but I enjoyed it. And I think the parents enjoyed doing it. We enjoyed doing it all together. We wanted to represent the team well. We wanted to represent the sport well. I think we carried it over to high school, you know, the high school teams. We wanted to, we wanted to make 
the sport look good. We wanted to make the team look good. We wanted to make the high schools. And we wanted to make Texas look good. When other teams came in from other states, other countries, we wanted to rep it well. We did. And we took it seriously. And I think we did a good job. And I, and, and I think that first big kind of event that you did, like, was the state tournament in 2013 that was down in at, at South Lake Carroll. And you were in charge yeah. of the hospitality. And you were saying something kind of kind of before we got on this about the level of play, the other teams, that that was your first kind of, like, right. it was like my first kind of, kind of viewing the high school scene. Our boys weren't even, uh, the Thunder boys weren't, Brett and Kyle weren't even in high school then. They were still in middle school, but Thunder was supporting South Lake Carroll with that event, hosting the high school state championship. And I was just amazed. I was amazed at how enthusiastic everyone was, the decorations, the buttons, the ribbons, the buses were decorated. It was just huge. And it was so much fun. It was, it was a great sport to be part of. I loved how the parents were really supportive and enthusiastic and they were just committed to this sport and i and the kids the kids were fun to be around they were the games moved fast it was a great environment it was just fun to watch and my husband got hooked on this sport and my husband didn't know anything about water polo whatsoever and now chris could just sit there and watch water polo all day long and a lot of times we stay at tournaments and we don't even have our kids didn't even play anymore because he wanted to see how the tournament was going to end who was going to win especially last year at the high school state championships when foster their boys and their girls both went to the final championship we stayed to watch both games late because my husband Chris had to see well I wanted to but he wasn't going to leave until he <laughs> saw those games play out because he knew how competitive the kids were and he follows a lot of the kids he knows how well they play not just I think that's great that we always supported other kids too in the sport and we were aware of who played I mean I, I'll say this but he he loved watching Zach Lowry play back in the day in high school you know Zach was a dominant player good player and he was just fun to watch so yeah. it's been fun also to watch all these kids that we've known play in college and one of the fun things to watch Brett play in college is watching all the other kids that we know and we're, we see them in college and we see them thriving and doing well in this sport and in college academically and athletically so that's been fun to watch too I'm looking forward to watching that in the future yeah and then I mean and like you talked about, your boys didn't get to play in that 2013 state championship because they weren't in high school yet. But then they did get to play in the Champions Cup that that uh, that Thunder hosted in 2014 and 2015. And that was like a little bit even a step up from the state championship. And you were on the pool deck and you got to kind of like talk to all the coaches and parents from all over. So that was definitely a, a little bit different, right? It was a lot of fun, and I, we loved the interaction with them, and we loved, you know, I loved learning about the game through the interaction with the coaches, with the interaction with the refs. I loved working the table at some of our local tournaments. Working a table, I would advise any parent who has an opportunity to work a table at just a local tournament and practice, you will learn so much about the game. And then, you know, it you'll be a positive supporter of the game, maybe from the stands once you see oh. what's going on down on the deck. I remember now Brett talking about refing, about how much he's learned about the game just from being a ref alone oh. and not a player. He understands the dynamics that are going on on the deck and on the pool, refing, playing, coaching. It's very interesting when you can see the game through another perspective. I, 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 I do have to admit, kind of, kind of one of the like the fun, cool things that you did was you had the charging station where you had a different, <laughs> a different little plug-in for every possible cell phone in the uh, in the hospitality room and obviously and obviously you also had like the table skirts and everything so it was great we've reached the halfway point of today's podcast and we'll return after this in many podcasts this time would be filled with ads for electric toothbrushes or recruiting services not here instead we're asking you to show your support for tx water polo by donating to it Go to txwaterpolo.com slash donate and help us continue covering the sport we love in the Lone Star State. 
Hey, this is Jesse Smith, recent Pan Am gold medalist. I was just checking out Texas Water Polo from the TX Water Polo Podcast. Also, you can check out the website. You can follow me at GoSmith now. Thanks, guys. Now, part two of today's show. And um, and and everything was donated, and you organized it all, and that was great. And then the and then those first early events, like the state championship, the, like the championship, it all prepared you for the 2016 Intercontinental Cup, where the teams came okay. from all over the world, and you were freaking out about, okay, this is the menu, and this is that. So are they going to be able to eat this? So tell me a, a little bit about that. I remember when we talked about it at a board meeting and you said there was a good possibility that Dallas would win this bid because Dallas was bidding against Hawaii and South America and huge cities in the world. And I, we were just a little intimidated and this is going to come to Dallas, you know, and it did. It ended up coming to Dallas. Teams from China, teams from South America, teams from Australia. It was a little intimidating, but we knew we could do it. I mean, the board, we talked about it. We knew it. And I, the menu had been playing in my head for a little while because I knew, you know, culturally, we knew I, they all made fun of me because I wanted sparkling water. But I was like, we need sparkling water because, you know, Europeans and South Americans like sparkling water. And we knew that this was going to be during Lent. I'm like, we need to have fish on Friday. And <laughs> yeah. 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 I get, I, it. It. I get it. I get it. I get it. And and by the way, I think I had one conversation with you and I said, do it, just do whatever you want. I have other things to deal with. I so. know. It was one of the few times <laughs> I got, I felt like I was getting the Amex black card from you. <laughs> like I didn't have to get a permission split slot signed or anything. You were just going to let me do what I wanted, which was like a first. You know, because usually I had to, we had to run everything by and get the Joe Linehan stamp of approval on every decision. But this time I was like, ooh, yes. But we were excited about it. The whole board was. We wanted to make Thunder look good. We wanted to make the WAC look good, you know, the aquatic center. We wanted to make Texas look good. Yeah, and I mean, and I and I still talk to people that came to both the Champions Cup and the and the and the Intercontinental Cup. And they still talk about the hospitality. Of course, that all led to the chocolate fountain that you had at the 2017 state championship, which I think everybody still talks about. Chocolate fountain. For those that aren't that, that are just listening, uh, literally fruit and a chocolate fountain. So there you go. That was it huge. was yeah. We, and I would only break that. I was going to break that out for the tournament we were going to have in the fall for Austin College. Unfortunately, that one did get postponed. But that was going to be chocolate fondue fountain worthy. So and I was going to break that out for that. Yes. The big teams were going to come. So we're looking forward to hoping we can do that again and make Texas look good again. Yes. And water polo. Well, I just want to say thank you so much for all the help that yeah, that you did back then. Now that you have Brett in college, how so how has Brett's kind of experience been in college from the coaching, the schoolwork, friends, et cetera? Oh, I can't say enough about Austin College. Everything, I mean, the school from everyone from the top, from President O'Day to his wife, Cece, they have flown out to games, to the athletic director, Dave Norman, to, to Julie, who keeps all our paperwork. I mean, I know I'm mentioning names, but that college is amazing, and I can't say enough about it, and Brett has absolutely thrived there academically, athletically, Coach Mark, I, it, his wife Casey, she came on a trip with us when we didn't have our um, coach because Austin took the position at MIT and we missed him, but we're happy to have Jeff. It's just everyone's been amazing. And he, he, has, he has thrived there and enjoyed it more than I thought he possibly could. Yeah. Now, one question I've asked him, now I'm going to ask you, is it far enough between Austin College and Flower Mound where you don't come up and visit too often? No, I don't come up and visit. I wish it was in Oklahoma. I wish it was <laughs> another hour away. Why? Because the, does he come home too much? The first semester, he was a little sad a few times. I was surprised that he was. He was surprised that he was. I think most freshmen are a little more surprised at how sad that they can become at moments. So I wish he was a little farther away that little that first semester because he didn't have a car. I did go up and get him a couple times. Ugh. 
that's okay. Me. Now, I mean, now yeah. he's also played in college, so that's definitely kind of, kind of different. But what about watching him now referee and coach as well oh, for the offseason and such? Chris and I stay and watch him referee because he's so nervous. He won't blow that whistle. Even though he's just, you know, he's not a very spontaneous player. He's not a very spontaneous referee either. He's very methodical. He's very systematic. And it's a fast-moving game. He just needs to blow the whistle. Just blow blow the dang whistle. Make the call, okay? <laughs> yeah, I think Brett's a good referee, and he's definitely been helping out a lot with the Mavericks people. Now, have you had – has Brett actually refereed a game where Kyle's playing? Yes, he did. This last in high school, we were just everyone in the stands was just kind of kind of chattering about it. It was really funny. We didn't know if that was very ethical. <laughs> I know it was. It, it was. Cool. It, 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 it was probably an oversight on the on whoever was scheduling the games. But now, did Brett? So did he exclude Kyle? Do you have any no, or anything? No, he didn't exclude him, but we were taking bets on that. <laughs> we were taking bets on seeing that that was going to happen, but I think he did. I think he did give him a free pass, probably one too many times. I mean, we could audit those games a little bit and see what was going on. It was only one game. It just and it hadn't happened before that, so we were. I know that they were they were short on refs here in North Texas, so I think they were pretty desperate that weekend. I've we are short on refs everywhere. So I'm trying to get my husband to do it. Cause I think oh, come on out. Let's go. Yeah. And, and the first, I have to give a shout out. Wes Mahan was the very first person I ever talked to on a pool deck about water polo back at UT Swim Center. I remember chit-chatting with him and asking a few questions. And he was amazing answering, you know, our ignorant, stupid questions back then. <laughs> So oh, there I, are no, yeah, like yeah, like there are no yeah. stupid questions. Just I mean, I am I am more than happy to answer any and all. So, but I think Chris would do a great job on the pool deck. So, well, one of the first things I didn't even understand were there are different sets of rules for different areas. Like Tisca has a set of rules, USA Water Polo has a set of rules, and high school has and NCAA has different rules. I I had no idea that there were different sets of rules for the different organizations because the kids would talk back and say, oh, no, mom, we can't do that. That's Tisca. And they're very well aware of them. I was pretty impressed with that, how the kids can go from different organizations and play and how as a referee, you have to know all the different sets of rules. So, so now, yeah, so just to let you know, I don't think you ever saw Kyle play with the quote unquote, the new USA water polo rules um, that they all came out in 2020. I don't think he played in a real tournament kind of between January and yeah, in February. Um, but the rules now, the new USA water polo rules, they were adopted for high school. Oh, and it's not official yet, but I believe that they're also going to kind of be adopted for NCAA as well. So so it's all going to be one set of rules well, be consistency. for yeah. everybody, which is going to make it always better for the referees. So, because yeah. because I'm sure you said a couple things, yeah, to a referee here or there, right? No, never, 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 <laughs> never. Not out loud, maybe <laughs> in my mind. I do recall one time. Kyle had talked back to a referee, which was very unusual. He never really did that. He thought about a call. He was passing the um, – he didn't pass the ball back to the goalie, and the referee made him pass the ball back to the goalie. And we talked about that a little bit after. I'm like, why are you talking back, Kyle? You know you're not supposed to do that, blah, blah, blah. He's like, Mom, I didn't have to pass it back to the goalie. That, that's when he told me, those aren't the rules. We don't have to follow those rules in high school. Those are only rules for this or this or that. And I was yeah. like, wait a minute, now there's more. So he was fighting for his right to not have to pass the ball back to the goalie. And sometimes there are the players that are – that have been playing water polo longer than some of the referees that have been on the pool deck. But uh, yeah, I'm going to definitely kind of reach out to your husband and see if he wants to get on the pool deck. Maybe not. Uh, so maybe next 
spring whenever his kids are out of high school and then definitely fall of 2021 for the UIL. So put a little bit of pressure on him because he's at home a little too much for me now. So I think we're all at home a little too much right now. So, but, um, Joe Linehan so, pressure that cause people don't really say no to Joe Linehan. I don't know about that. I think that's, I've been more behind the scenes the last few years. So they, you know. they still don't say no, but, um, so now Kyle's also playing at Austin college this upcoming fall. How did that come about? Is there going to be a, a little brother, brother kind of butting heads or something like that? Is there, know. is there only going to be one car for two of them? What's yeah, yeah. like, you know, so what's going yeah, to happen? Only going to be one car for two of them. Cause Kyle will not have a car the first semester either. Like Brett didn't, but I think Brad will watch over him. We didn't really talk about it during the decision-making process. I mean, I was crossing my fingers. I was lighting candles. I was just doing anything I could to pray that he would go to Austin college not just for the water polo, but for the school itself and the proximity and the academics. I knew it would be a good fit for him, but I didn't really put any pressure because Kyle just would backpedal from any parental pressure. But he came up to came up on that decision, you know, on his own, communicated with Coach Lawrence on his own. He just handled his business himself and decided on his own. So we were very happy about that. I think the brothers are secretly looking forward to it. They won't admit it. They'll pretend that it's a little annoying, but really I don't think it is. I, Brett doesn't mind that he's there and, and Kyle didn't go to follow his brother. They're, they're each on their own path, even when they're together. And even though they played the same sport, they're still individuals and they respect each other's individuality. And we love comparing and contrasting them, but really it's all in fun. So I hear that, uh, you know, that Kyle is, um, he's not going to get to play this upcoming summer, his last kind of summer, kind of, kind of before uh, kind of going off to college. It, so was he a little sad? Have you talked to him kind of about that at, at all? Yes, he is. He was sad about not doing Thunder, especially. They were, the boys were really, this group of boys that have been playing on Thunder, you know, the Cameron, Andrew, Nathan, Cabot, Cameron, Spencer group, these boys have been together for a very long time. They were really looking forward to this one last JOs together with Sabrina. You know, they've been with Sabrina for a very long time. So that was, they've had a lot of good memories and a lot of good games. So that, I think they're going to miss that just as much as not having their, you know, end of season high school games too. It's, it's a good group of boys because they come together and play on Thunder very well, but yet, you know, they have to play against each other in high school and they, they make that transition very amicably. And it's, it's a good, it's a good thing to watch to see them compete against each other in high school games and then come together and play together well as a team. I do think it's kind of uh, very funny to see these kids that are joking around during like a club tournament, but then, but then you see them on the, uh, on the pool deck prior to whenever they're playing each other, they don't even talk to each other. No, They, no. they don't even talk to it. It's, it's, it is complete game face and focus yeah. except for like, you know, a Spencer Shelley who will go kind of crack a joke. Um, but I, I, I think Kyle is focused in the, in the moment for sure. But. They absolutely can play each other in a high school tournament and and keep it together and then st and and forget about it if that whatever happened in that game in that high school competition it's over and they still play together and play well together as a club team. So oh. for young boys and young athletes, they do do that. They make that transition well. I am sure Kyle's going to get back in the pool and get to play a little bit with um, his teammates prior to going out to Austin college. We just hope it's in a week or two, not, uh, not a week or two before he leaves to Austin college. So. Oh, no, I hope not. I'm going to go make him run or something. That boy's not doing anything except playing video games. Or laying out in the front driveway. Oh my gosh. That's yes. He is. He's trying to get his, he's trying to get his speedo thunder tan going. <laughs> <laughs> always came naturally by this point but with you know the quarantine he doesn't have his speedo tan lines so he's bought some coconut oil and he's <laughs> driveway. yes hopefully there's not too many people that have kind of listened all the way through to here to where they're going to make fun of him for that but it might go yeah. viral so we'll drive we'll by our house it's right in front of morris <laughs> road you can see it without even slowing down Mm -mm. Yeah, Brett told me that last week, and and he was just shaking his head, you know, whatever. Yeah, well, kind of, kind of whatever he was telling me that. Now, I mean, how has the Austin College been like 
like the experience from, yeah, for you as a parent. Oh, getting I mean, to know the other parents from around the country, kind of going out to the different college teams and stuff like that. So we um, we clicked immediately from that very first game, the very first inaugural season. We went out to Brown, the very first game. We we didn't know each other. We didn't even know who was going to be on the team. And then all of a sudden, these parents started showing up. And we were all wearing Austin College shirts. We didn't even know who belonged to whom. One of the parents, Judy, she was really sweet. She had pulled together a roster. Um, another parent, Bill Griffin, he had pulled together an email list. And it, it's, it's been great ever since then. It's, and we were, it's kind of like the kids. We were on rival teams, rival clubs, rival cities. But we played well together in the pool you know, in the sandbox, we all, you know, got together, got along really well. Um, and we're, we traveled quite a bit. It's kind of like back in the NJO times where people were amazed at how many Texas teams traveled to play water polo. And it's the same at the collegiate level. We were going to cities as a group and there would be 20 or 30 parents. We would have more parents than some of the other local teams that had local kids. So we were, we were a force and people kind of remember seeing all the Austin college. We got a lot of, we got a lot of flack for that. Sometimes the first game we were playing in Brown, I we recall a parent sitting in the stands, looking at the roster saying, where in the, you know, H E L L is Flower Mound, <laughs> Texas, because there were, you know, six or seven kids on that inaugural roster that were from Flower Mound, Texas. So we did get a little kick out of that. We, you know, had to explain geographically where we were. Well, that's so okay. Yeah, 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 that's okay. You had the Flower Mound representing. And then there's been even more after that first year. And then there's going to be more with you, uh, with Kyle and, and Brady. Is there anybody else going from Flower Mound up, yeah, kind of uh, up Dawson College? Kyle and Brady are coming from Flower Mound High School. There's several other people that are coming from the other areas, though. Denton, there's Marcus. There's girls that are going up there, too. So there's still a lot of kids that are going up there from North Texas. And we're excited. We're excited. I think every year it's just going to get stronger and better. And it's just improving every year. So it'll be a lot of fun to watch. All right. So, so the last thing here, any suggestions for other parents that are – just getting involved with their club about kind of getting involved with their club, their high school, any suggestions, you know, for parents out there? I think this is a great sport. I think it's, it's just tremendous athletically for them. I think even, I remember in the beginning when we would first go to NJOs, how as a parent, it seemed so demoralizing to be losing 21 to three, you know, 21 to two. But I remember, Joe, you were really good about reminding us that they were going to get better. They were going to get better faster. Even coach Mark would remind us when we go play California teams, you're improving in that one game is like worth, you know, a week's worth of practices from that experience. So don't get frustrated because they get better, faster. And the kids, I think the kids, what we don't understand is their self-confidence is boosted if they played well or they improved, even if they lost a game. But if they did something well in that game, if they had a good block or a good goal or they made a good pass, even if they lost that game, they they feel and know that they're improving and they're getting better. I think sometimes parents take the win-loss thing. Sometimes they're a little hard and sometimes they can be a little harsh. I remember a long time ago I had um, an athlete. Sometimes they always came over to sit by us in the stands, probably because I had snacks and food. You always had snacks and food. I always had snacks and food in the stands. I think the coaches kind of would go up there too. So there you go. <laughs> this is true. But I do recall one of the kids saying, you know, Mrs. Skinner, you're one of the parents that never yells at us if we lose. And it, I was just very surprised by that comment. I just never realized I didn't yell at them, but I didn't realize how they can kind of take that in. So I would say just don't yell at them for losing and just support them and let them have fun and let the coaches do their job. Let the referees do their jobs. Let everybody do their job. Well, I think that you did a great job with Brett and Kyle. 
uh, kind of they're they're both uh, great young men. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing them keep playing up at Austin College for the next couple of years. Um, Brett is Brett is helping me coach with a with a new developmental club with Mavericks Water Polo. He's we have to work around his his new kind of summer coaching or kind of college job, which is like he's like he just turned 21 of all things. Now now I feel old. He was 12 whenever he started. Now we uh, and now he's 21. And well, um, this is. What was that? I said you could buy him a beer now legally. I asked like I, I asked him. So have your parents kind of sent you down yet? To, yeah, yet about the alcohol? And he goes yes. Yes. <laughs> but, so there you go. The next but, day. <laughs> there you go. But uh, but um, uh, I, I just want to say thank you, kind of to Angela for for suggesting you. Thanks for Brett yeah, for setting you, you up yeah. and being patient and helping us work through our technical difficulties. But uh, most of all, thank you, Lena, for, for uh, yeah, for all you've done with for the club, for your kids, for the sport, for hospitality. Oh no, this is where I get to thank Joe Linehan for introducing this sport to North Texas, and for he and Coach Cullen and all the other parents and refs who supported this sport from the very beginning. My boys wouldn't be going to Austin College if and playing water polo if it wasn't for you and Colin and everyone else involved. And I appreciate it very much. It takes a village. It takes a village. It, it, takes a village. it was a good village. We had a good village. And, and it's not, and it's, and it's not a village. It used to be a village and now it's like a town or city. So, cause it has grown significantly. So yeah, you're not done with me yet. So don't even try to think that this is some sort of goodbye thing. Okay. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah. Oh no, no, no. I definitely don't. I, I will stay in touch. You are, you are, I mean, there are t a ton of parents. I still stay in touch, but you are definitely one of the more entertaining ones to talk to. So. Yeah. I still, so, you know, your ankle bracelet isn't off yet. Okay. I'm still <laughs> keeping track. Just saying. All right, Lena. Well, uh, well, thank you so much. And I hope you listen to the podcast and hear your voice. And I hope all those Austin people don't be afraid to give her a little crap the next time you kind of see her. Okay. Well, I enjoy the podcast and I'm very glad that I got to be part of it because I've been listening to them from day one. So we appreciate it and we have a lot of fun with it. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Lena. Thanks. Bye. Our thanks to Lena Skinner for one of the most charming discussions we featured on our little show here, and I doubt it's the last we've heard from her. And thanks to you for listening and telling a friend about the TX Water Polo Podcast. Until next time, so long from Austin. Sports LLC. My dog is scratching at the door. Uh, I, I can hear him.